Britain is facing its wettest winter in two and a half centuries and some of the worst flooding in decades. We have been working for 48 hours evacuating people, risking our own lives going into waters that would be over my head. This was predictable and, uh, and it was avoidable. Money is no object in this relief effort. Whatever money is needed for it will be spent. Now it's quite hard to read the inscription, but it says this stone was placed here to mark the source of the River Thames. So that's where we are officially. Of course, in reality, there's hundreds of sources, but this is a proper one. And you'll see up here, this is the very beginning of the Thames Path. Thames Barrier, London, 184 miles. Now that's 184 miles of catchment. And throughout that whole catchment, the water is pouring off the fields. It's going down the land drains, it's going into the river, and it's swelling that river. And at the moment, we're seeing what's probably going to be a flood pulse developing as a result of all this new rain that's coming in that's going to visit all sorts of problems. Today we've come literally to the source of the problem. We're now 300 metres here above the official source of the River Thames. And what we see is land use of the kind which I believe is partly responsible for what's going on downstream because instead of the kind of cover which you would expect in a sensitive catchment that absorbs the rain, that lets it filter down slowly into the aquifer rather than flushing off the surface, trees and stuff, in other words, we see field after field which has been bared, laid bare through the winter, and the rain is just flushing off it and carrying with it stuff which is lovely when it's in a field, it's called soil, but then when it's washed off the field and down into the rivers, become something else entirely, silt, which is what causes quite a lot of the problems. And we're going to follow this trail of silt down into the Thames. So you can see the water coming out of the gate of the field, coming straight onto the road and forming a little river, a really filthy, muddy river, which goes right the way down the road. It'll end up in a land drain down the bottom, which then goes straight into the River Thames. The water was really approaching the main building faster than uh, expected. We had water inside uh, the building, in the bar area, but luckily uh, it didn't flood our restaurant, it didn't flood the rest of our buildings ex except for the offices, which are totally ruined. We've been marooned here for about four days. Yes. We couldn't get out that way or that way. Oh, the, the head of the Met Office has been saying, well, this is consistent with climate change. This is what climate change looks yes, like. What do, right. you, what do you feel? Well, yes, I, be I believe in climate change. You can't have human beings digging all these yeah. stuff, the stuff out of the ground and burning it yeah. and, and putting CO2 and God knows what into the atmosphere without it having some effect. What you can see here is a lot of silt. There's a lot of mud in the water. It's been precipitating out onto the road. That's what causes particular misery for people in their homes, of course. You know, even after the floodwaters are gone, you've still got all this muck stuck to your carpet and to your furniture and all the rest of it. Well, I've come to explore a newly discovered body of water, which is a loyal imperial subject I think I will call Lake Cameron. We're on the outskirts of the village of Hurley in the Thames Valley. It's actually really nice and still and peaceful. <laughs> you know, obviously it's misery for the people living here. It's very calm at the moment. The, there's this little, we're in the eye of the storm really. The really bad weather of the last couple of days has abated for a day. It's about to resume tomorrow. The waters have been dropping a fair bit over the last couple of days, so it's not nearly as bad as it was, but there's a lot more to come. And it's been causing the sort of chaos and disruption, the broken electricity supplies, the children sent home from school, the people needing to be rescued from their homes, that we were always warned about if climate change struck. Now this, remember, is um, 
after the water has dropped substantially, I mean, it's already come down three or four feet in just a couple of days. It's amazing how, how quickly the Thames empties by comparison to, say, the Somerset levels. But, you know, the misery it has left behind, the ruined carpets, the ruined gardens, the trash just distributed everywhere. Perhaps the worst thing that Cameron has done, and he's done a lot of pretty bad stuff as far as the environment is concerned, has been to appoint Owen Patterson as Environment Secretary, because this is a man who says he doesn't know whether climate change is man-made or not and doesn't know whether it's a bad thing or not. And, you know, when you've got someone who's prepared to turn such a blind eye to this overwhelming, massive body of science, it's just this classic end-of-the-pipe approach. You know, we're not going to look at what needs to be done to prevent this sort of thing from happening, but we're going to spend unlimited amounts of money once it does happen to, to, to clear up the mess and pick up the pieces. Well, what's the sense in that? Tell Her Majesty we have circumnavigated Lake Cameron. Native friendly, not many crocodiles.